and welcome to another video. Um, I'm Katie, and this is what's her name? Seth. Seth. In this video, we're gonna show you how to make some blueberry scones. Today, Seth is not only um, a special guest, but also the cameraman. So we'll see how that goes. Um, we are gonna be making blueberry scones. I've been making them almost every day this week. We are heavily calving here. Um, on spring break looking towards Easter and so I wanted to share with you this blueberry scone recipe because I think it's the perfect recipe it uses a lot of pantry ingredients comes together really quickly excuse me comes together really quickly and yeah everybody has been enjoying them I've been making them literally every day so and the other thing is it uses mostly pantry ingredients but if you don't have blueberries you could use chocolate chips you could use raisins you could use mixed berries you could use kind of whatever you have on hand um, you could do like a cinnamon scone and that would be delicious. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Okay, we're gonna start with two cups of flour to that. I'm gonna add a third a cup of sugar and then we're gonna add a tablespoon of baking powder and then we're gonna add three quarters teaspoon of salt and that's all of our dry ingredients. We're gonna give this a mix. You guys are gonna see us come together super fast. And then it's time to add the butter. Now you can, you can come up. I'll come, come up to my face and then I'll start over. You don't, don't start the video over, I'll just edit it, okay? Okay, so now we're gonna add the butter. You can freeze your butter if you want to. If you are not that great of a planner, then just grab it right now. Okay, so we're now we're. Put that in the video. Okay, so now we're going to grate a stick of butter in. You can use a pastry cutter. I've kind of gotten on to grating it in because I think it's faster. I'm just using the big holes on the grater and I'm just gonna quick work through this stick of butter. Try not to get the wrapper in there. All right, so that is all the butter in there. I'm just now going to take this wooden spoon and I'm just going to mix the flour and the butter together. Just wanna coat the butter in the flour so none of it's sticking together. And then um, we'll add our wet when this is combined. All right, so that's all um, kind of coated in flour. Again, you can use a pastry cutter if you have one of those, um, or you can use two knives. Honestly, I think the grater's probably the fastest way in my opinion. Um, so now I'm gonna work on the wet so I have um, my milk. I'm gonna add an egg in there, and this is a half cup of milk, and I will put the recipe down in the description box. To the milk and egg, I'm gonna add some vanilla, and then I'll give that a whisk. Just wanna get that egg broken up before you go into the dries. And I'll just put that right in the middle, and mix that up. And you're just mixing until a door, <laughs> not till a door forms, but a dough. All right, so now this dough is starting to come together. It's actually just a touch dry. There's just a few parts that aren't coming together. So I'm just gonna take like about a tablespoon of milk and kind of drizzle that in the dry parts and then mix it up. Okay, the goal is to make sure that as we're mixing this, we're doing everything as quickly as possible so that the butter doesn't melt. Um, you could technically mix this with your hands, but I wouldn't really recommend it because the warmth from your hands will melt the butter. We're working quickly, and if your dough gets too warm, pop it in the fridge for a little bit, and then you'll pull it back I'll out. I'll talk in case we use this. Now, just so I'm going to start by just taking a piece of parchment and sprinkling some flour over it. The dough is ready to go, so I'm going to dump that on top of that, and then there. I'm going to dump my dough on it. We'll just do I'm then going to dump my or dump. I'm then going and to now press gonna my dough press into a square. This into time, a square. it looks more like a circle, I'll be honest. Um, but you're going to press it into a square. Now, this seems kind of weird because I thought we were making blueberry scones, right? Well, I'm going to show you how I make my blueberry scones without getting the blue all mixed in. Because I find if I just add the... And I'm using frozen blueberries, by the way. I find if I add the blueberries, even if they're frozen, when they mix in, they kind of tinge my dough a little bit blue. Then so, this is the way that I do it. Crazy. So, I'm laying the dough out and then I dump all my blueberries on top. Josh. and kind of try to curl them okay. and I'm kind of pressing them in the dough um, as I push or as I put, put them on there so that they don't roll away and I'm adding quite a few blueberries here. I then put a piece of parchment on top and really get them pressed into the dough. Now they're all on top of the dough and I want them inside of the dough so it's almost like a little bit of a cinnamon roll thing we have going on here not quite. We're going to um, fold this into thirds like the letter so I'm going to pull one third in and push that down with the parchment 
and then um, you can see it there and then I'm going to come from the other side and again push as I'm pushing this side down I'm shaping this up I want a rectangle and I'll obviously show you how I cut that into triangles if you're confused right now because often you work with scones in a circle I then flip my dough over pulled the parchment off and now I'm just taking this um, pastry um, or bench top scraper and cutting it into triangles and when it gets sticky, I'm just putting a little bit of flour on it so that um, it can keep going. And there are my eight scones. It does make about eight. My last one got kind of tiny, um, so try to make those as even as possible. And I'm just dishing those out onto parchment paper. No need to grease or anything like that. And um, it's pretty simple. Again, I'm trying to work as quickly as possible. Um, the slower you're working, the warmer your butter is getting. And um, it's not going to be quite as nice. Sometimes I will pop this in the fridge for about 15 minutes so I don't have to worry about it getting um, too warm before I bake it. I'm then just beating an egg to do a quick egg wash. This helps the scones get a nice color. You could also use heavy whipping cream um, as a wash here and just using a pastry brush to brush that on. Um, you will have leftover egg here so you can use that for something else to make yourself a scrambled egg whatever you need to do to be frugal there. I'm then popping it in an oven preheated to 400 degrees. To finish these scones off, we're gonna make a glaze. You don't have to make a glaze, but everybody agrees that it makes them much better. Now you can decide if you want it to be like a drizzle, you'll add less milk. If you want it to be just an all over, like thin glaze over the whole scone, um, you'll add a little bit more milk. And um, you can just kind of add and mix and add and mix. Just don't add too much milk. Um, I think I'll add probably a tablespoon or two. My family, I made it both the drizzle and the glaze this week, and they prefer the all-over glaze. So that's what we're going to do right now. And um, Seth, come on down to the powdered sugar here. All right, we're going to add woo, a couple tablespoons. That was probably plenty. But we're doing the glaze here. And if you add too much milk, you'll have to add more powdered sugar, which is not the worst problem to have. So what we have here is probably more of a drizzle. If I was going to drizzle it, this is probably more of the consistency I would use. So I'm just going to add just a little bit more milk. That was a lot of more. But I think she's going to work. So it's a nice, loose consistency here. You don't want it to be too loose or else it will completely run off. Um, but I think this should work perfectly. So just waiting for those scones to come out of the oven. So, Seth. To appear on the illustrious at Katie Lee Wilson YouTube channel. One year. One year. When we were filming our omelets video, Seth waited around in case Susan had to go to the bathroom, but it never happened. So this is his big debut. He's super pumped to be here. Right? Mm-hmm. I wanna focus on the scones. We're gonna let them cool off for about five, 10 minutes and then we're gonna glaze them. So now I'm just taking that glaze and the spoon and just pouring that over the scones, just trying to make sure they get an even coating of that. They are warm right now, they're not piping hot. I let them cool off, like I said, for about five to 10 minutes and just pouring that over the top. The consistency that we have here should kind of um, go off the sides, but again, it shouldn't completely fall off the scones, just so there's a nice thin coating and doing this while they're warm helps. And there are the super easy scones. If you break them open, you can see they're buttery and delicious, and that glaze makes them super yummy. I hope you enjoyed yummy. that video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos like it, hit subscribe, and you could give a little shout out to our cameraman down in the comments. I'm sure he'd love to see it. I hope you have a very blessed Easter. I hope you enjoy it with family, and maybe these scones could be something just to add to your breakfast table to make the day special. And I hope you just enjoy um, celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Thanks. Bye.